Now I have to get my, oh, where's my phone? Press, can you bring me my phone? Sorry. I think we're live. Are we live? I think so. Um, I hope so. Yeah. I think we are, we're live. Okay, oh my word. And there's my alarm to remind me that we need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, here we go. Get onto my page so I can see um, our, who's there? Okay, so I am Data White and <laughs> most likely you know that if you follow this page. Um, but I am here with Cass from Clutterbug, also the star of HGTV's Hot Mess House, the one and only. Um, and Dawn from The Minimal Mom, also the author of, what's your new workbook called? Declutter your home in 15 minutes a day. All right. So right. three of us work together on a course called Take Your House Back, and it is open for registration right now. And this is kind of the perfect time to join in because it's ready to go. I know when we launched it last year, we, um, you know, it officially launched on January 1st, but it's open. Like you join the course and you are ready to go. I mean, like you can start yeah. immediately working through the modules and all that. So what we're going to do today is a question and answer. I've been doing these on YouTube over the last um, couple of days. And so I've been collecting questions. And one of the things that we do as part of the course is um, answer your questions because we, I mean, the course itself, you go through it, you're going to get the information that you need to take your house back. It's at takeyourhouseback.com in case you're wondering. Um, but we know that there's more to it. Like everybody has their own like things that they need to, um, you know, get clarification on. And sometimes it just takes, you know, hearing things over and over in a different way. And so we do these Q and A's over the course of um, the year, you know, within Take Your House Back. So uh, we just thought we would do that today and answer some of y'all's questions that have been submitted on my form. I forgot to put the actual form link in there, but we'll also take some of the questions here from the live. I'm just trying to figure out how to do this with five different places. Well, and Dana, we should probably mention too that all of the previous uh, Q&A sessions are archived in the course. So if you buy the course now and join in, um, you, there is so much extra content in there. And what we've heard is that it's really great to listen to it while you're working, decluttering and simplifying. And so there's hours and hours and hours in there. Yeah. And so I think that that's, that's important for you to, to know is that you get so much with this course that we really don't generally share other places. And what I believe is the magic is the three of us having these conversations together because everybody's different. And we're three different people who have come to pretty much the same conclusions on a lot of things. But because we do this together, we get all of our different perspectives. And, you know, I say something and Cass is like, wait, what? And then that helps clarify it further. <laughs> yeah. and, um, you know, and we come at it from our own unique perspectives, which I think is really, really helpful. Well, I don't just think that, like we hear that all the time from people. Yeah. It's very helpful. Okay. So I am getting back to where I can see, maybe you guys can watch the, um, comments on the actual mm -hmm. thing. Okay. I see can you see them? Cass? I don't have them. Yeah. I do. There's so okay. many highs, Christine and Laura and Lori and Elizabeth and um, Cindy. Hello. Hello. And Star. Hi, everyone. Glad are here. Okay. All right. Decluttering Q&A. I've got them. All right. So um, this is a question that I had from Sarah. It says, when you decide, when can you decide the place where you would look for something first needs to change? Sometimes it's not the best place for an item, even if I thought I would look for it there first. So I actually, um, just to be clear, this is how, you know, we follow my five-step decluttering process within the course itself. And my two decluttering questions, the first one is, if I needed this item, where would I look for it first to determine where something goes? But this is a great question. Like, I am personally going through this. We just moved. And so we're in a new home. And I'm like, where would I look for this first? And I put it there. But sometimes I was wrong, okay? And I think <laughs> the issue here is you saying sometimes it's not the best place for an item, even if I thought I would look for it there first. The key here is where did you look for it first? That's what I'm finding myself doing 
is I do the best that I can because otherwise I'm coming up with this perfect place for something. And that's where you get into the issue of, oh, I got organized and now I can't find anything, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so I ask myself, where would I look for this first? I put it there, but then if I find that I actually looked for it first somewhere else, then I move it to the place where I looked for it first. Does that make sense? So it's yes. still going on that instinct, but it does sometimes take a little bit of trial and error, but you're always going to be better off if you go with that instinct from the beginning. Does that make sense to y'all? Or what would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I think too, as I've decluttered more and more, it's freed up areas. And then I'm like, oh, well, this should go there. Not where I had it when my house was totally full. You know, now I'm like, oh, we have a little more room. I can be a little more strategic. So it does change over time. I have heard people say too, like, well, I moved something and my family doesn't know where it is now. And so you can put like a post-it note or something in there to be like, hey, new location for this is in there, you know, or whatever. And, and I do think a lot of it is going with where your family is looking for it. You know, I mean, like if they're consistently going, mom, this thing isn't here. Well, then that's the place where they're looking for it first. And that's where it needs to be. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cass, what would you How say? How about you, Cass? I'm an organizer. Don't ask me but... because listen, I I think there's such, I think sometimes we unpack in a new home and we're tired and we're just putting things where we're putting things and it isn't always the best spot. And so I think if you do things slowly, if you're like, why am I walking across the kitchen every single time to put the forks away? Mm -hmm. It's not you're rearranging your entire kitchen in one fell swoop. Let's just move the cutlery drawer beside the dishwasher and stop there. So I do think it's okay to do some shuffling of your things, but in baby steps. And this is where people, they try to do it all in one is why people fail. And just like a habit takes time to get used to, a new home for things can take time to get used to too. That's why we only, I really only recommend doing one at a time. When you're creating a new home, it's like one small thing at a time. Love it. Good. Okay, um, Amber asked, uh, would you mind sharing your cleaning routine or just give ideas for a generic one? Um, she says that she's, now these were questions specifically to me, but I just like she's describing my book and that she doesn't see dirty until it's really bad. So she needs daily tasks she can do to keep the house up. So my daily tasks are do the dishes. If you can't do anything else, do the dishes. It's strangely magical, not magical at all because you actually have to do them, but um, <laughs> but the, it's magical the impact that that has on the house overall, it's like shocking. Um, and sweep the kitchen, uh, do a five minute pickup, check the bathrooms for clutter. But as far as a cleaning routine, it really is all about finding one that works for you. So the one that worked for me for years and years and years until I hired a cleaning person um, was to assign a task to a day but not because, oh my word, I have to do it on Monday. It was for my brain to realize how long it had been since I did something. So if I said Tuesday is bathroom cleaning day, it's not even necessarily that I always, always, always stopped everything and cleaned my bathrooms on Tuesday. It was so that my brain had a trigger to remind me it was time to clean the bathroom because otherwise I like it, it felt like it was such a monumental thing to clean my bathroom back in the early days that it was like, oh, I feel like I just did that. And it could be a month ago. You know, I mean, like that was how things worked in my brain. So if I said Tuesday is bathroom cleaning days, then when Tuesday came around, it was like, oh, oh, that's right. I need to clean my bathroom. It was just a trigger for me. Also helped me go, wait a minute. Last Tuesday, I had this going on and I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Oh my goodness. It has been three weeks since I cleaned my bathroom. And it was a way for me to have that, um, have that, have me not just go on and on and on and wait until all of a sudden it re I realized it was horrific. Anyway, mm -hmm. what would you say? You go Cass, you're better. Yeah, that I do. I, I do a dirty 30. That's what I call it. It's a dirty 30 every day. It's 30 minutes and it is dishes are non-negotiable. So 
I will not go to bed without doing the dishes. That's part of the dirty 30, but now we're in, we're sort of like doing the dishes throughout the day. So I no longer have a big pile at night. So it only takes minutes to load or unload the dishwasher. Um, and then it's wiping down the bathrooms really quick. We're not scrubbing, we're not deep scrubbing and a 10 minute tidy. So kitchen bathrooms and a 10 minute tidy. And the magical thing is I don't have to really clean. Like I know it's not like I have to, I don't designate a day for vacuuming or a day for mopping or anything like that. Because if you're doing the dishes, the laundry and tidying every day, the rest of the stuff doesn't need to be done very often. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't dust my <laughs> date baseboards. I don't do a big like two to two, two, like Tuesday's dusting day because don't put me in a box. You know what I mean? I, I can't have structure like that. But if I'm doing if I'm doing the most important things every day for just a half an hour, I don't have to do those really big things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do vacuum you guys like, other, you know what I mean? But, um, but not very often. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I think what you're saying is the thing that was most shocking to me about actually having a house under control is the power and impact of that little stuff. Like, I always, because I wasn't doing the little stuff, I assumed that everything was big stuff, like that, that was the only thing that would matter. But that whole, like, my house is not a project. It's really more about those little bitty daily things. They, it, it's shocking the impact of that. Don, do you have anything house on that? Was, sorry, cleaning my house when, when I had clutter wasn't even cleaning. It was tidying so I could clean. Yes. I would spend an entire weekend just stuff shuffling, shoving closets, picking things up. And I was so exhausted. I was never really wiping surfaces to begin with. Yeah. And so there is a difference between cleaning and decluttering. And decluttering takes time to get to the point where you don't have to move stuff to wipe anymore. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't still have a daily dirty 30 routine. Yeah, I think that's good. For me, I, I've just kept decluttering until everything is self-limiting. So like we only have one to two place settings per person of dishes. So you have to wash the dishes after each meal or you don't have dishes for the next meal. You know, like we have enough clothing that if we're not doing a load a day, like someone's not going to have a bath towel in a couple of days. And so that's, that's been for me, what has worked best. But I think what I love about the three of us coming together with this course is like, we've been able to find these, this like common ground. And so if, if this kind of stuff has not worked for you in the past, we're going to help you declutter. And then all of a sudden it now putting us a, a habit in place, like doing the dishes every day is not a big deal. And so that's what I love about this. We help you get the inventory down. And then, and then Cass and Dana, especially have really helpful tips for these like systems and routines in your homes. Yeah. I feel like it's that checks and balances, you know, like, not that I really know what that means. Um, but <laughs> But it's like that. It, it, it's, it's like the, the daily stuff shows me what I can declutter. Like for me, yeah, that yeah. was the thing. I started with dishes and then I had an understanding of how many dishes I needed, but I mm -hmm. did not understand how many dishes I needed because I didn't trust myself to keep them clean. So I always thought I needed more, but then having more made it harder. Like you said, to get them under control because I would just go longer and longer and longer before I did the dishes. And so it was, it's this, yeah. it's this crazy cycle thing. Okay. This is something that is, I have a 20 year old as of today. Whoa. What in the world? Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask y'all this cause it's been a long time for me. Um, and I especially did not do this as I was um, working on my house, but what advice do you have for women trying to declutter or store clothing during pregnancy or postpartum for future pregnancies? I mean, obviously this can apply to just things that you are going to need in the future. Um, yeah. I find myself becoming stressed about organizing and storing clothes to fit each stage. Here's what I, uh, just a random story, but this 20 year old, I have a 20 year old and then I have an 18 year old and the pregnancy fashions went from old fashioned, like what they were in I love Lucy, you know, um, with the 20 year old to the 18 year old went to like much more like what pregnancy fashions are today. Anyway, I'm just saying like, I was shocked at how mm -hmm. everything was completely out of date in that two year period. Anyway, yeah. so what, what do y'all say about that? Well, that's what I found too. Even though our, our kids were all 19 months apart 
they would be different seasons. I would be a different size. Stuff would change. Um, stuff would wear out. And so I think the container concept, we kind of joke sometimes that like the answer to everything is like the container concept, but I would select one Rubbermaid tote. That is where you store your maternity stuff. You put in the highest quality, your favorite pieces to keep. And then whatever doesn't fit in there, you pass on. Um, but that season actually goes so quickly too. You don't need as much clothing during pregnancy or even a lot of this different seasons that you might have. And same with if your weight's been fluctuating, um, anything like that, pick a container, that's how much you keep and then let the rest go. A, a Rubbermaid tote holds a lot of clothes actually. Yeah, so. it does. And that's exactly what I was going to say too. It cannot be in your closet. It mm -hmm. cannot be in your dresser. It cannot be where your other clothing are. And I like the under the bed rollouts and one, you get one and what fits you keep. And if it doesn't fit, you have to make those hard decisions of what's your favorite and what isn't, but giving yourself one designated place for those to go is the secret. Mm -hmm. Well, and yes, a lot of people said right. on our, our last all day declutter, you actually went through your clothes in the different, I mean, you've changed a ton of sizes lately and people said how powerful that is and we haven't mentioned we do have another full day to clutter coming up on saturday january 15th but i mean that was really impactful to people to see you actually go through that yeah it it, it was it changed my perspective too because I used to keep clothing that were too small, the too big. I didn't trust myself. I was, uh, I, oh, I'm going to fit into that one day. But having clothes that don't look good on you, that don't fit you is so toxic. And for yep. me to change my mindset and see it as toxic bullies, I open my closet. I feel bad about myself, whether it's subconscious or not. If you have things in your closet that do not make you feel good on your body, they should not be in your closet, yes. period. Amen. Mm-hmm. Another thing too with that, I think, um, you know, I don't know all of the background on this question necessarily, but I do know that with each kid as well, like the first pregnancy, you're like, oh, I'm going to need all this stuff. And then with each kid comes more desire to simplify mm -hmm. <laughs> and more desire to be like, uh, yeah, I, I just need less stuff to deal with. And, um, yeah, totally. Um, here's a good one for us to answer because we, um, we, we get this question a lot and we talk about it a lot. And I love that all three of us have different experiences, but really very similar perspective on this. So what would you say to a spouse who is skeptical that real change is happening? I've come so far over the past few months, but I know I haven't reached my clutter threshold yet. So I'm still in the thick of the process. Um, can you give my, oh, this is funny. Anyway, I hadn't read the whole thing. Can you give my <laughs> husband any advice that will help him understand why this is hard for me and what he can do to support me? Um, you know, here's, the, here's what I'm going to say on this. And I, I don't know all the history of this. Maybe you and your husband sat down to write this question together, but most likely not, right? <laughs> most likely you're the one asking this question. And so there's not really advice we can give your husband because he's not the one looking for advice. It is really all about you and your perspective and how you handle this. You need to appreciate what you have done and know that we understand a skeptical husband. I mean, like that was my story. When I started, I didn't even tell my husband what I was doing. This was secret. I made up a fake name I, because I thought I would fail. And I didn't want to tell him because he's so supportive, but I knew I would see that look in his eyes whenever I would tell him, Hey, I think I figured out I'm going to do this. And this is going to change our home. And he would be like, eh, you know, and it, it, I just didn't want to see that look in his eyes, you know, because I knew he would be skeptical. And so there might be a reason why he's skeptical and you just keep going, just keep going. And it's going to take time and there's value in you keep it on going, even if it takes him longer than you wish it would for him to understand what's going on. Um, yeah, but also play my first audiobook play how to manage your home without losing your mind so that he can hear in the background that there are other people who maybe operate the way that you do. I don't know. <laughs> say on this. That's good. Well, I think you might have to acknowledge um, that often the, the fear of spouses or partners is that we're going to get rid of stuff and then rebuy it. And so if we can acknowledge like, 
you know, I can understand where you see that I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff and you might worry that I'm going to start to reaccumulate or spend money um, rebuying it. But I just want to let you know that I'm really serious about it this time. I, I really believe this is going to help us keep our house, you know, stay on top of it more. And so um, I know you might be skeptical, but I'm just going to ask you to trust me here for a little bit while, while I keep going. Well, with I think that too, go ahead. I, I just think it's human nature. I know maybe I'm just not as kind as you guys, but when I first started this journey, <laughs> I was pointing fingers, right? Mm -hmm. It's because of my kids. It's because my in-laws are always buying things. It's definitely my husband's stuff. He's just as to blame. And so when I started decluttering, it's nature, human nature to want to declutter other people's things first. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you have to stay in your lane. You just, you're doing this for you and you're focusing on you and your things first. And then my mindset started to shift. I was like, this is making my life easier. I'm happier. And everyone noticed that. I didn't have to nag. They fell in line and start, that's a weird, bad way to say it, but they started following my lead and doing it without me having to nag because they saw that it was now a positive thing and it was bringing me joy and they slowly started doing it on their own. But I had to change first and stop pointing fingers and just focus on me and my stuff. And I think too, that's so much of the value of the way we do things in the course at takeyourhousemac.com um, <laughs> that we are about the progress. Meaning we are not necessarily about, y'all, it's different this time. It's about let's do something today that has an impact forever. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like go ahead and do something today. Every bit of paper that you go through, which Cass and Don handle the paper. They're the <laughs> ones amazing at that. Um, I have started using the system they recommend and it has literally changed everything for our paper stuff. So I'm, I am here to tell you it's amazing, but but everything that you do, every item that leaves your house, all of that is real progress that is not just, I don't know, when you get into that whole mindset of everything is going to change, I promise people, they're not going to get on board with that because that's hard to picture. It's hard to understand. It's hard to believe maybe because of past things that they've experienced with mm -hmm. us, you know, but this being a little bit better today. Mm -hmm. is powerful. And then something else being a little bit better tomorrow. And then the next day, those things, that's where the real, the real power is in that. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, amen. That's good. Preach it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a minute to make sure that people know what we're talking about here. So this is Cass. Cass is, um, the amazing Clutterbug person on YouTube. And she is also the host of HGTV's Hot Mess House, which you totally need to go watch. It's on Discovery now, right? Right. It's on Discovery Plus. Yeah. Discovery Plus. Okay. So um, you need to go watch that. I mean, it's amazing, the transformations. And she's just adorable. Anyway, <laughs> but, um, and this is Dawn of The Minimal Mom. And she is the um, author of her new workbook, which is called 15 Minutes What? Declutter your home in 15 minutes a day. Declutter your home in 15 minutes a day. And um, she is uh, of the Minimal Mom on YouTube as well. And the three of us together have a course that we put together. It's been out for a year now. It's called Take Your House Back. It's at takeyourhouseback.com. And um, I mean, people are taking their houses back. Like I literally am in tears when I see the pictures, the before and after pictures that people give, the testimonials that people share. I mean, people are passionately in love mm -hmm. with this <laughs> community. I mean, like this group. And so it is an investment. I'm not going to pretend y'all know I'm super cheap. These two ladies are also super cheap. That maybe has something to do with how we got into the situation that put us on this path needing to do it. <laughs> um, but, but really though, it's an investment, but this is a great week for you to invest in it. So you go to takeyourhouseback.com, you purchase the course, and then you get a login there on takeyourhouseback.com. So it's not done on Facebook. It's done on takeyourhouseback.com. You work through the modules, it's videos, podcasts, worksheets, all the stuff to keep you focused and talk you through your house. Um, and then there is a Facebook group. Y'all are all on Facebook, obviously, right now, if you're watching this live. And, um, you can join the Facebook group. You're not going to miss anything as far as content if you don't join the Facebook group. So if Facebook groups overwhelm you, 
you can skip that. Everything that we do live within the Facebook group does go into the course as bonus content for later. So one of the things that Dom was talking about earlier is that um, there we do these question and answers within the course. Okay, we're doing this here as like a taste for y'all of how this works. Um, but we do these within the Facebook group and then they are recorded and put into the actual course itself. So you're gonna have all of that. But the Facebook group for people who like cheerleading, I rebel against cheerleading. That's just my personality. <laughs> um, like, so I'm like, hmm, you're telling me this, I'm doing great, but I feel like you're also telling me what to do. And so I'm not going to, anyway, so I have to stay away from that kind of stuff, but so many people love it. Like it is like their favorite part of it is this group where everybody is speaking the same language. Everybody is going through the same process. And so there is that as a huge part of the value, if that's helpful to you, but you're not gonna miss out on anything if you aren't in it, if that makes any sense. We just wanna make it work for you. Um, okay, so- You need accountability. So many people need the accountability, right? Yeah. We have, we're, we're amazing to show up for other people, but we don't yeah. need to show up for ourselves. And that's the, uh, for me, that's the best part of mm -hmm. this course is the accountability not just we're holding you accountability, we're holding you accountable. We are, but so is thousands of other people who are exactly where you are. And um, I just think that's really part of the magic for sure. Can I tell well, and Dana story? too, go ahead. Oh, you can tell a story. I was going to say, and we design it so that if you have energy limitations, physical limitations, unsupportive spouses, kids that have extra needs, a demanding job. I mean, we, when we designed this, it was very important to us that it was practical and it works for those of us who all the other stuff didn't work for. Yes. So one of the things that we've talked about before, um, I know Cass is super into the four tendencies by Gretchen Rubin and, um, people have asked me and I'm like, yeah, I've taken the quiz before and I'm a rebel. Well, y'all in her newsletter, I don't know, it's been probably a month ago, but I started having all these people forward it to me because she had listened to one of my podcasts and she was like, this is the perfect example of a rebel. <laughs> and I was like, yep, there you go. Or I was talking about like reward systems that don't backfire for me because, you know, I'm the, the whole accountability thing. I'm like, mm, I'll do what I want yeah. to do. Anyway, I know yeah. I have issues. I try to work within it, but um, okay. Let's see if we can answer some of the questions from the chat. Are y'all able to see them? Yeah. Michelle asked a question that I get all the time that I love. It's how do you overcome the struggle of wasting money. So mm -hmm. this is one of the big things we talk about. We actually talk about different reasons of why it's so hard to let go. And one of the biggest ones is it's the fear of I'm wasting money, seeing your things for the dollar amount that you've either spent on them or it would cost to replace instead of seeing it for what it's doing for you right in this moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest struggles that people have when it comes to letting go. What yeah. I do on that is I have to, I break down and realize how much might this cost to replace. And then I say, okay, let's say that's $20. Would, if someone asked me, would you pay $20 to have this space be usable and lovely and not cluttered? Would you pay somebody $20 for that? My answer is generally, yes. If I am completely overwhelmed with that space and I can't stand it and it makes me dislike my house, I'm like, it's worth a hypothetical $20 to me to have this space be decluttered and usable between now and that hypothetical time when I might need to replace it. So if I do have to pay $20, then I consider that $20 that I have spent to have an under control space in my home. And that helps me shift from that. I also, you know, break down the square footage of my home and I think, okay, this is how much we paid for our house. This is the price per square foot. And am I really willing to pay that amount per month of our mortgage payment? I don't know. It's math I've done in the past to help myself think through it. I can't remember what it is now. And we just moved and all that, but anyway, but I, I look at it and I think I'm paying, you know, 10 bucks a month for this space. And it's like not even usable. I hate it. It makes me dislike my house. And so when I start thinking of the money in that perspective, it helps me as a super cheapskate person. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I've helped 
literally hundreds and hundreds of clients. And this is something that they struggle with so often. And what I found is really helpful to just keep repeating to people is the money is already spent. Mm -hmm. You are not any richer for holding on to that and you won't be any poorer for letting it go. And so let's establish rules for things when you're letting go. If you know you can get $20 or $50, I don't know what your threshold is, but set yourself a threshold. Try to sell it on Facebook Marketplace, but give yourself a limit. I have seven days to sell this item. If it isn't sold, then I'm donating it. And what you're going to find is you're like, this isn't worth selling this thing for $20. I'm going to up my limit to maybe $50, maybe $60. But you have to try that in order to see the value of your time. And until you've taken that step to say, I want this out of my house, I'm going to take a picture, I'm going to post it. That's how you overcome the anxiety of seeing everything as money is doing the work. Yes. It's stepping up and doing the work. Um, that's just mm-hmm. what I found helps for people. Yep. Um, I would, what, go ahead. No, it's fine. Move on. Um, what tips do you have for the after Christmas clutter? So I actually just did a video. My recommendation is to follow the five-step process to, because the problem with after Christmas clutter is it's overwhelming. It's that like, <gasps> what just happened? Oh my goodness. You know, and start with the trash, throw away the trash do the easy stuff, take it to the place where it goes, work through any donations. And then part of this question I love is, um, is it okay if your children say, I don't want this and put it in the donation bin? I'm gonna say yes. I I mean, like that's where we've gotten to with our family is they have permission because I don't want them to have attachment issues to stuff that I have personally had. And not that I'm saying that it was ever because my mom didn't let me put it in a donation bin, but I mean, I see my kids having a very loose relationship with items and things and stuff because that's the mentality we have. If you don't need it, stick it in the donation box that we always have going. Totally. Yeah, we do the one in one out rule. So as we're putting things away, they got a new book. Oh, find a new book to go. Oh, I love all these books. Well, if if you're if you love your old books more than this new book, let's just let the new one go. And it takes time to get into that process, but you can even do okay, you got 15 things for Christmas. What are 15 small things that you can let go? You can also do that. Um, but that's what we should all be doing every time. To- every time we go to the store and buy a new shirt, we should be swapping it out because that's how our homes fill with clutter. So the one in one out rule is helpful at Christmas for sure. Well, and that works too for you to say, okay, you've got a new, whatever, new toy. So let's one in one out it. And then they realize, well, there's not any old toys that I want to get rid of because I want this one. So, well, okay, then that one needs, you know, so it's a way to work through that logically without the emotion and the power struggle of, oh, you have too much stuff, you know, that, that works. Okay. I do have to let y'all know my printable. Yeah. My printable of my decluttering flow chart. If you want, this is the ugly version. Let me see if I can, oh, my iPad died. So I can't show you the color version anyway, but it's a decluttering flow chart. It is the pre-order bonus. When you get, when you pre-order my new book that comes out, I'm so excited y'all. Um, it comes out two weeks from today. Can you even believe it? I, I can't, I mean, I know, whatever. I've been talking about it forever. So, but, <laughs> but if you um, grab it, just search Danny K White wherever pre-order the book and then go to a slab slash pre-order and you can get um, your printable immediately. Okay. Okay. So um, I think we're going to stop there. We are going to be doing these in other places. So follow each of us in all of our places because we're not sure where we'll end up at different times, <laughs> but um, we want to make sure you know that take your house back is open right now and it is well worth of the money because you're going to get a very much a year's worth of value. I did see someone had asked, um, does it like, what is the renewal cost for people who had it last year? Um, and right now for this year, the renewal cost is only $10. So, um, I am trying to convince them to up that for next year. So y'all take advantage <laughs> right now. While you, <laughs> if you had it last year, make sure you renew it. Um, but yeah, so it's, yes, it does expire after a year, but it is not like you're going to be paying the same cost um, for the second year. So um, it's, it's well, 
well worth it. It's an investment. Mm -hmm. We get that, but we also feel like there is something about making a financial investment in this process that actually will push you farther and help you. So, yeah. I think I, I personally, my favorite part is the all day declutter because I really yeah. treat you like I do my coaching clients. I yell at you. It's boot camp. <laughs> I just in my hour. You guys are very nice in your hour, but um, it's a coaching call. It's a it's a live coaching call, and I charge more for my one hour live coaching call than I do for the entire course. And so yeah. you're getting that all day live coaching call, um, and I think that is such a. I just I think for me I think the full day declutter is is so worth it. And we've mm -hmm. had so many people say, literally hundreds and hundreds of people say they've decluttered more in that one day live declutter than they ever have in their lives. And so not only can you take part in the live declutter, but you can watch the last two live declutter and treat that like a coaching session, a full day coaching session too. So you're getting so much value with the Take Your House Back course for sure. Okay. It's been fun. Y'all go to takeyourhouseback.com and join in on the fun. You're going to love it. Okay. We will talk to y'all later. See you then.